you know, people hearing your sounds on HBO, yeah. you know, on Apple Radio with Ebro. For sure. You know, how do those things come about? So I got to give a shout out to my boy Xavier Top 4. We had another song called Confetti. It's going crazy too. The video out right now. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was actually premiered on HBO. They got a show called Rap Shit. Mm -hmm. Check out a preview of my new show, Rap Shit, streaming July 21st on HBO Max. I had a placement in that. Go check that out if you haven't, man. It's on HBO. HBO Max, actually. That's just one sound. He got so many other different sounds. And, um, you know, with that Meg The Stallion track, I wanted to ask you, when you saw that, that, um, that album going gold and you know you want it, you know, what type of feeling do you have with that? Do you feel like, okay, I made it now. I'm just arriving. Like, how do you feel when you get some feedback like that and knowing? The Highest Point Podcast. More than the pod, it's a lifestyle. lifestyle, lifestyle. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the Highest Point Podcast. This is a podcast for everyone, no matter where you're from, no matter what you've been through. You know you deserve the best and willing to put in the work for progress to reach the highest point. Now, speaking about reaching the highest point, we have a very special guest in the building. I'm talking about a super producer, ladies and gentlemen. You can hear this man's sounds on Apple Radio with Ebro. You can hear his sounds on HBO. This man has worked with celebrities, one of which who has a high kick that can push you through the stable. <laughs> I'm talking about Meg D. Stallion. He got sounds on her album, and she recently went gold. That's 500,000 sold. I'm talking about we have the producer, the entrepreneur, Aries in the building. What's good with you, brother? What's good, my boy? Cool and cool, man. Man, I'm yeah, so cool. glad you can join us, fam. Like, yeah. you're doing a lot of, lot of dope things out here. And um, we got to bring some light to it. But one thing on our show we like to do is uh, showcase the journey. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Because a lot of times people see the end result and have no idea how you got to where you at today. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to ask you, can we start off by... You know, getting some insight on where you're from and kind of what were your family dynamics growing up. Okay, okay. Um, originally I was born in Atlanta, you know, Fulton County. Mm. Um, I've been moving around a lot, so like my parents was kind of split, but so I went back and forth from South Carolina to Georgia, mm. like kind of like Myrtle Beach area, Georgetown. Yeah, kind of grew up in those areas too, in South Carolina, but um. I love my family dynamic. Um, my mom was always super loving. She ended up passing when I was 14, though. Oh, so, man. Sorry to hear that, fam. Yeah, nah, you good. But, um, you know, my, my pop's always been supportive. Um, he did music back in the day, so that kind of what pushed me into it. Mm. And then I kind of just got focused, like, around 14. Like, my mom kind of passed, so it kind of opened my eyes. Like, you got to choose what you want to do. Wow. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just gave me the time to really focus in on it. Yeah, that's what's up. I was literally, that was my next question, if you had any history in music. Yeah. So what did your pops do? Um, So like he is a poet, producer. Um, He was a former artist. So like I just really just grew up around music. I used to remember riding in the backseat, mm. just listening to his beats. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world, you know, oh, growing man. up. Wow, so he was like one of your first inspirations yeah, to this. Yeah, definitely, definitely. My first inspiration, he taught me, you know, how to use Fruity Loops and everything. I used to sneak on his computer. Dang, that's fire. Salute the Pops for that. Sure. You know Shout what I'm out saying? Pops. <laughs> for real, for real. And, um, and you know, Mom Dukes left you with this amazing inspiration as well that just eye-opened. It's amazing how, you know, mothers can still have that insight, that push that that button in you you know yeah, what i'm saying in so sure. many ways you uh -huh. know what i'm saying yeah. and i know she's super proud of everything you got going on yeah, understand that you have that history when did you like about what age do you, you did you realize okay i got some talent in this i'm all right i'll probably say around 16 like i mm -hmm. feel like 16 i was really getting my stride i finally got into a studio mm -hmm. let artists hear my beats like it was a it was probably like a couple months stretch where I'm transitioning from a bedroom producer who mm -hmm. got the fire beats and then actually getting in front of artists and seeing what they like. But once I made that transition, I caught on pretty fast. So oh. I'd probably say like 16. Oh, that's dope. 17 at the latest. Mm. 
So that's when you're 16, 17, you're like, okay, yo, I got some talent in this. Mm -hmm. All right, so usually there's a next step. Like, it comes talent. Then, like, what gave you the confidence to say, okay, I want to actually build this into a business? And about how long later did you start, like, okay, I'm selling beats now. I'm not just creating them and just showing uh, my stuff. I would say probably the next year I got, I'm trying to remember if it, I'm trying to make sure I'm accurate, but I believe the next year I had a song with Gucci Man, and that kind of, like, solidified what? Oh, you can't just go on. past that. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 2017, man, we dropped a song called Ghetto Superstar. It's my boy Pat Man Jit from Florida. He got a feature with Gucci Man straight when he got out. Real trap, nigga. Real ghetto superstar. I pull up in that foreign car. Snatch off with your bra. Pull up, I'll pull your car. All this jewelry on, I'm licking like the water boy. I'm in South Beach with your bitch, but I'm a Georgia boy. Trap superstar, I'm trying to hit all the hoes. King pin status, man, I need all the blow. So whenever Gucci got out, like, that's when the song dropped. Mm. And that really gave me the motivation to be like, all right, you can't just be doing it out here to do it. Like, right. You got to build connections, sell beats, get my business together. Right. That's a hell of a co-sign. Like, so. Could that's that's amazing. So and you know Gucci, he one of the legends out here, especially that's for the South. Saying. You know that's you got saying. roots in Atlanta, roots in South Carolina. So I already know you. That was major for <laughs> me, bro. I'm, I'm telling you, bro, because that, that's that's like a stamp. That's the biggest stamp I could get. Right, real coming out the South, Atlanta. Right, right. So you know we talking about you know doing tracks with Gucci. You know. You on Meg The Stallion's recent album, so yeah. you know you came from Gucci back in the day, even up to this point. Recently on Meg The Stallion, how in the hell did you even make that type of connection to make that happen? All right, so around twenty twenty one, around March, I believe, Pooh Shiesty came to our studio in Myrtle Beach, mm -hmm. Glow Street Studios, and he laid down some tracks, and then. He locked us. He locked in with us for two days, and like the second day, he just had a bunch of features that he had to get done. Mm -hmm. So he had one song that's on his album. So you on Pooh Shiesty? Yeah, I'm on Pooh Shiesty album. He got a song. I can't remember the name right now, bro. I'll be doing so much work, but it's it's Lil Uzi Vert and Gucci Man on the song too as well. Mm. So I recorded that because I also engineer as well. So I recorded that, and then he had a feature with Jack Boy. Make the Stallion. I don't think the Jack Boy one came out, but the Make the Stallion one came out on her album. Wow, that's fire! So just building connections. You you in that work? He came to the studio, laid down some tracks, yeah. and then one of those you even got on his album and Make the Stallions. Yeah, so, crazy. Yeah, it was a crazy feeling, bro. It's wow. For them to actually use the songs, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I record with a lot of artists. It, whether they be big or small, and not everything always comes out. Right. And, and that's the thing, like, you, people can't be demotivated because, okay, you put on, I, I got a lot of these people on my tracks, nothing dropped yet. Yeah. Well, you just got to keep putting in that work. Yeah, you got to. Consistency is everything. Yeah, because it's mad like other producers out here coming up hoping to get opportunities like that. And, they're, and they and they just wonder, because I'm like, I know in the intro, they're like, what? He did what? Yeah. Like, How? Yeah. A lot of them just want to know how. And it's like, I don't know, bro. It's just about being in the right place, in the right market, and just being available, you know? Yeah. Sometimes that's what is really all it takes, like being available and not too like, oh, I need this before before this happens. Just being in the seat and ready to work. Right, right. Pushing that button, just going. Like, a lot of times we keep procrastinating. Like, Yo, I got to have everything perfect to go. Yeah. But the main thing is you just go. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? You stay ready. They came up in there. Like, you already had this ready for them. Yeah, I'm engineering. Y'all hear some of my sounds. Boop, boop, boop. Line up. Mm -hmm. and shot them and down. that's another thing. You got to be a team player, too. Like, I'm mainly a producer, but if it's like, if the moment is for me to engineer, I'm not going to be trying to push my beats super heavy. They already got beats and tracks they need to work on. Like, I'm going to be a team player, get the job done. Right. So, they, so I can further build the relationship, and then I can play a beat later. Ooh. See, he thinking about that long game. I'm telling you. That's what it's about. Like, and cause timing is so important. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, these opportunities come in front of you. Um, and you also get you can't be acting, all right, you got this opportunity. You can't just try to bum rush somebody like, yo, I do this, I do this. Mm -hmm. You go ahead, help them what they got going on, yeah. support them, build that relationship, and then they're like, okay, well, let me hear what you got. Yeah. 
and just like, damn, you dope. Provide value. Provide value on God. Yeah, man, that's fire. That's some game, y'all. Y'all make sure y'all paying attention because this is serious game. This man been in the business. He's doing his thing. And um, I done checked out his work. I actually checked out your work um probably about a year or so ago when we first met. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, yo, he dope. Let me, sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, and I, and I knew like where you was coming to where we was. I knew you like, yeah, he got to be up on yeah, to something to be out sure. there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because you was networking, I was yeah. networking, and a year or so later we connect, and you know we here. Yeah, you just gotta reconnect. Yeah, don't yeah. Scared, don't be scared to reconnect. It don't facts. matter how long it is. Facts, facts, and um, I think we spoke about you coming on like a minute ago. Yeah, but I ain't feel no type of way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm just and like yo yo like whenever you ready. Yeah, I'll I be here. I, I don't think I was ready. Like I'll be trying to just like I don't know. Just yeah, you be busy. Yeah, I be busy too, though. <laughs> I be trying to ease into it. So I was like, if I got some time to come up here right later today, I'm going to go ahead and set it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, I think it's needed, man. And, um, you know, that, that brings me to a segment of our show called Who You Rocking With. Mm. Now, we know you're a producer. Yeah. You know, you got, you know what I'm saying? You're a veteran in this game when it comes in the era of music. Your pops did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you in that back seat, you know what I'm saying? Just vibing, writing. And they're turning the tools on the table, doing everything. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we want to get some insight on your ear, okay. like some of your tastes. Okay. So um, I want to ask you, who you rocking with? I'm going to give you two options. You let me know, okay, this person who I'm rocking with first. If they drop something, I want to hear them first. That's okay. who I'm, That's my favorite over the two. All right, I can do that. All right, bet. All right, producers. Pharrell or Swiss Beats? So this is kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, this is tough. This is a tough little segment. All right, so yeah, I can't give two answers though. I ain't gonna do. I I would say that's crazy, bro. <laughs> it's it's both All of right, them me personally though. Both of them legends, not taking away from nothing. But my my actual come up, I would have to say Swiss Beats. Because when I was younger, I'm actually knowing who Swiss Beats was. Mm. Pharrell is kind of like, once I started producing, I had to go back and tap in to see how much of a legend he was. Right. Because in my head, I'm growing up, I'm just thinking Pharrell, artist. So then I have mm. to really do my history. So that's why it's hard for me to like really pick Swiss above him because I know Pharrell better producer, but it's like, my actual upbringing, I was listening yeah. to Swiss. You had a, he had up, more impact on growing him. up. He had more impact. Like I knew he who he was without him having to do anything. Yeah, and he got that personality. You hear him, Swizzy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's uh -huh. out there in your face. It's yeah. Like and then all the tracks of Lil Wayne, Drake. Like, Ooh. yeah, yeah, classics. fire. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I bet who you rocking with, Metro Boomin or Zaytoven? Oh man, you put me on the spot. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I just met Zay two like two weeks ago. Too, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, uh, he gonna be here. He gonna be seeing this. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he gonna see this. Um, <laughs> I love you, Zay. I know you're a goat with them keys, but I gotta go Metro Booming because like I wouldn't even be producing at all if it wasn't for Metro Booming. Mm. Tell the truth. I'm gonna tell the truth right now. So, so what? What pushed him? What give him that edge, Metro? It's just like the sound. Even from when he first started to now, it's just like he can make a hit all around, and it's like it's his stuff. Like, yeah, it's like he bringing the artist to his world. Versus like, if you hear Future on the Metro track, it's different than all the other Future stuff. Mm. Future got out. If you hear, and I think he one of the only producers that got that. Like Zay got his signature sound, right? But like. I don't know, bro. Yeah. It's something about Metro, bro. Yeah, yeah, you know that. And Metro! All, all the albums he's been putting together recently, like, goaded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goaded. He goaded. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I bet. Hmm. Who you rocking with? Kanye or Dr. Dre? As an artist or a producer? Producer. Dang, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. Both of them rapped. Yeah. Both of them had people writing for him too. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I don't want to say artists because it seemed like Kanye, his delivery was better than Dr. Dre to me. But I still want to, you know, get your your what your opinion is. But yeah, as a producer. I say as a producer. I don't want to start. <laughs> I'll say as a producer, I would say 
Kanye. Mm. Kanye, because like it's the same thing as Metro. Like it's just the inspiration that it gave me coming up. All the beats he was doing. Like I feel like the Yeezus album is really sucked on. Mm-hmm. Man, it might be because I'm younger, but it's like that was a time where he was really experimenting, right? Doing crazy beats like that's yeah. never been heard before. Right. Yeah, that's facts. He won't scared to step out of that, you know, that bubble. Yeah. No disrespect to Dr. Dre though. You're oh no, no, no. That's go. Legend yeah. for sure. For sure. Um I don't know even if I want to say this. Like, uh, does Kanye have more versatility than, than Dre? I don't know if I was I would say that though, because like if we go on the whole disc discography, mm-hmm. I don't know if I could say he got more versatility. But if we just do a strictly producer, I like Kanye beats better. Got you, got you. I yeah. bet. All right, let me see. Mustard or hit maker? I'm going with DJ Mustard. That, Word. That, that 2010 to 15, 16 run. I don't know how long it was, but yeah, that, that was the craziest <laughs> thing I ever heard. Like all the little bass and. All the bells and stuff he was using, right? It's simple. It's simple stuff that's in the programs that producers use. But like he was going crazy with it, making club bangers back to back. Right, right. Facts, facts. I bet. I right, last one. Let's go back old school a little bit. Okay. Timberland or Jermaine Dupri? Mm, I gotta go. I got to go Timbaland just off of, like, I ain't going to say lack of knowledge, but, like, I only know a couple of Jermaine Dupri. Like, I only know the stuff that everybody know. Yeah. And I, I think that's really where. I have my research yet, but Timbaland, he just stuck out to me. just like the Swiss Beats. It's like, I already knew without having to do too much. Right. Or go back and take a history lesson, you know? I yeah. Guess the impact is already there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he, he produced Get That Dirt Off My Shoulders with Jay-Z. Yeah. It's like, Jermaine Dupri? No, 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 no. Tim. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That jump was like crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and um, I think a lot of times people sleep on J- Jermaine because they just don't know. Like you said, yeah. he don't be putting his name out there yeah. enough for people to know. For sure. So, yeah, yeah. I got to pick Tim, too, because he's still doing his thing. Like, Facts. You know, going live, cooking up. Yeah. Still they started the day. verses. Yeah. They started Him and Swiss. Too. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. That, yeah, that's legendary off itself. Like, yo, we, yeah, you can't go past Tim or that. Like. He did that for the culture. They did that for the culture. And that just mm-hmm. kept a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, like, yo, I got to keep going with this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They kept the hip-hop thing moving with that versus thing sure. when everybody was sitting home. Yeah, everybody was sitting home. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Right, right. So, you know what I'm saying? Now we got some of your taste, you know what I'm saying, and like understanding things that, uh, you know, you're into. Yeah. Now, something that I want to do now is I want to play one of your tracks. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I want to play some of your beats. For sure. So I want to pull up. I'm just go straight up to your website and just throw a track on Let's for the it. people. Let's let people it. hear this man's sound. Like, yeah. we just talked about people having, you know, certain sounds. Um, you know, how they doing things on keys. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, yo, Aries on point. You know what I'm saying? He's a well-rounded producer. You can hear him. Obviously, you heard him on Pooh Shiesty. You, heard, you got him on Meg the Stallion. Gucci, the name just keep going. You know what I'm saying? And it, keep pe- and it keep flowing. You know what I'm saying? Like straight up and down. So I'm about to fire up. Uh, let's fire up a track. He like, yo, which one he going to choose? Oh, God. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking in my head. Like, which one? Is it the best one? <laughs> you got too many best. Yeah. Oh. Huh?
guess I spit a couple balls. Used to be the underdog, now the main event, you the undercard. Matt Devon, he back at it again, the highest point. Freestyle, them others, they don't contend. This the only Young place Aries for the hottest. Cut, no, we ain't being modest. If you buy it, come show you got it. Uh. If you got it, come show you got it. <laughs> Let's go. definitely had to let the people hear yeah. and i'm saying like your capabilities for sure and um that's just one sound he got so many other different sounds and um different ranges sure. so y'all definitely tune in pay attention um you know with that meg the stallion track i wanted to ask you when you saw that that um that album going gold and you know you want it you know what type of feeling do you have with that do you feel like okay i made it now i'm just arriving like how do you feel when you get some feedback like that and knowing it's kind of like a double-edged sword because it's like you do have that feeling of like you made it now, but then it's like, how do I get the next one? Mm. So it's just like I, I'm hella proud of myself. I feel like I'm making like my people's proud, anybody who's supporting me proud. But at the same time, I got to figure out how to get in the dough all the way. Like I got, right. I got my little pinky toe in. Right, right. So, you know, it's up from here. It's only up from here. That's all I'm just trying to look at it. Yeah, facts. So, you know, you still got that hunger. Yeah. You know, even when you get those placements, you still got that hunger. And that's so, so important. And that's what really makes the difference from the ones that, okay, don't make it and do. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You keep that hunger no matter what. For sure. Like, I'm still just beginning. Like, I don't, it don't even matter. I'm still pushing forward. Yeah, that's the energy I try to have. Like, I'm making my first beat today like you know yeah you gotta still have that same hunger to keep you going right right super facts super facts now we also was talking about you know you're doing things with you got you know people hearing your sounds on hbo yeah you know on apple radio with ebro For sure. you know how do those things come about all right so first and foremost i gotta give a shout out to my boy xavier top four mm. um we went back up like probably when i first started making beats mm. i was just sending beats to Artists on Instagram. This is a little cheat code, though. I it's not really popping no more, but I used to go on Sprint Rilla, and they used to have all the artist contact information. Wow. So I'm going through front page, going crazy, sending beats out to everybody. My boy Xavier hit me back. We've been locked in ever since. And really just, like, we got a single called Dreadlock. Mm. Um, we had a single called Nissan, going crazy. I'm trying to think. And we had one called Bitcoins. All three of them singles, I think he put on Apple Music with Ebro. Mm. So he put that on Ebro show. And then our song, Confetti, we had another song called Confetti. It's going crazy, too. The video out right now. Yeah. Young Aries in the cut, nigga. All my niggas been ready. Flow raw like Eddie. Might be a little petty. Send Ops Confetti. Oh, wow. That was actually premiered on HBO. They got a show called Rap Shit. Mm-hmm. Check out a preview of my new show, Rap Shit, streaming July 21st on HBO Max. And it's a it's a crazy show. It's about like a girl. She's working at a hotel, or whatever, and then she decides to chase her dreams. But it's a cool show. Like they got crazy point of views. Like they'll have like the phone, Snapchat. Yeah. They'll, they'll actually be like, I don't know how to explain it, but they'll be filming the show with, like, phones or phone <laughs> angles or whatever. Yeah. And it's a pretty dope show, but, like, we um had a placement in that. Oh, that's It's dope. a little party scene that they got. 
So go check that out if you haven't, man. It's on HBO. HBO Max, actually. Wow. So so did the placements come from it being on the Apple radio or like – because I'm just trying to understand. I'm sure people got questions. Sort of, kind of, yeah. But, I mean, my boy is Xavier Top 4. He got a um a little label that he rocking with called Top 4. Mm-hmm. So, like, he really just be trying to push his music every chance to get. It really wasn't like a, all right, we're going to send these songs to these people. It was more just like he submitted his whole catalog and they pick what they pick. Mm-hmm. Or, like, whatever he's pushing, he just try to submit it through. Right. So, like, I mean... With the HBO stuff, like, there's a lot of opportunities for film, um, TV, mm-hmm. ESPN. You can go to, like, Three United Masters. Mm. And then, like, you you never know. You can might go to your favorite channel, and they might have their contact information, and you might be scared to, like, reach out, but it just might take a simple reach out, and they might pick up your music. Right. So that's so important. A lot of times people, like, they feel like, okay, I'm dope. I'm talented. I'm putting my music out there. I'm just putting it on my page. I ain't reaching out to nobody. Mm-hmm. It's all going to come to me. Yeah. It don't work like out. that. You got to reach out. You know what I'm saying? You just think they're going to just automatically come across you? Yeah. Like, that's just not reality. Yeah, it's not reality, though. You know you what I'm saying? in the footwork. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, people see you got, you know, you got that grind. You reaching out. They pay some attention to what you got going on. And then, who knows? This could be a relationship blossom from that partnership in music and just so forth just snowball Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like yo stop thinking everything gonna come to you people yeah Yeah. it ain't coming to you if you want it you go get it Aries going out there going get it he going to find the people information the contact spin real like (laughs) yeah i get in the door bro like especially see i come like i'm based out of myrtle beach right now so Mm -hmm. it's like we don't really got a big platform to where artists coming from here artists come from there it's just like we got to kind of figure out, figure everything out ourselves. Right. So I just try to find the best opportunities and just try to show them what we got going on. Yeah, That's for sure. That's all you can do. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? They bite, they bite, they don't, on to the next one. Yes, sir. <laughs> you dig? So that's what's up. That's what's up. It's some. Um, I know you got these things going on with the artists now. Like you got mm-hmm. this new challenge going on. Yeah, I got a new challenge going on. Can you tell us a little bit about the challenge and, and also – what happened with the last winners of the of the challenge? Okay, okay. So we got this thing going on called the Bet On Me Challenge. And it's really, like I said, we're trying to create a platform for artists in our area to kind of blossom and grow. But what we basically do is we done had three of them now. Mm. And so we get a beat, drop a snippet. We let a bunch of artists kind of freestyle on it, give us their best verse. Mm-hmm. And basically what we do, we pick the top five, we get a venue, we let them perform in front of judges. So, right. So far, we done had deal visuals, um, mm. my producer guy, Gas Bros, we done had Rico Barino on there, mm. um, Kid Kid, um, formerly, you know, G-Unit. Oh, yeah. Um, we done had him, I'm trying to, we done had my boy Baby Breeze, he's a um, producer from Charleston, mm. South Carolina. He's pretty dope. Like he done had credits with a lot of people, so we put them in front of the judges. Let them judges pick the winner, right? And we take the winner, link up with them, record a full song because they get prizes for winning the challenge as well. So you get free studio time, mm. free music video, free beat, rights to the beat, and then we just try to throw in some more like promo stuff and push the record. So like if we can build our relationships with other people. Right. But, like, we can't – it's not guaranteed, you know right. what I'm saying? But we just try to push it as hard as we can. Um, Our last winner, Heal Her, she got a single dropping pretty soon. The video about to drop, I want to say, either this month or the, the beginning of November. But we got some pretty exciting news. Like, she got a partnership deal with Empire for the single. Mm. So it's just like we just try to keep it coming. Um, Our first two winners was Joshua Isaiah – Bisky Christ, they're from the Myrtle Beach, Conway area. And they saw him been going crazy for a minute. The um, videos are out on YouTube right now. And then if you want to go check out the challenge, if you're an independent artist, it's at Bet It On Me. Bet It On Me? Yeah, Bet It On Me, like past tense. But yeah. It's, it's pretty dope challenge, though. I, yeah. like, I, like, I like doing it. 
Yeah, man, it sounds dope. You know, yeah. it's all this exposure for the artists. You know what I'm saying? And they showcasing their talent. Yeah. You get in, you get to perform. You get to you get in front of all these audiences, people that's in the industry. And then like some else came about where they get a partnership deal with Empire. Like yeah. you know, that's yo, that's just that work. Yeah, that's that work. We shout my boy on Fast Life Chuck too. Like he put it together for us. You know, salute. I can't speak too much on it yet, but. It's just something that I feel like it's crazy, bro. Yo, like it is. For for the winner to be able to like put their brand out there to that big of a platform. Right. Like you're just trying to get bigger and better each time. Yeah, yeah. What makes you still wanna you know, you doing your own thing, but you I see it's still important to you to work with other people, like independent artists, yeah. you know, help bring light to them and, you know, help others get on. What what is it about that with you? I'm going to always work with independent artists just for the simple fact that, like, I know what it takes to, like, come from a small market and still be pushing yourself, promoting, investing in yourself. Right. Spending money with the right people, building the right relationships. So, in that sense, it's just, like, I I kind of want to be that bridge where it's, like, you know, you know the classic story, like, either you got an artist and producer, they come up together, the artists get too big. Mm-hmm. And now the producer left, or the vice versa. The producer gets super big, and now it's like, oh, I want two hundred thousand for a beat. Like, right? It's just like I, I kind of want to be that bridge a little bit. You know, you gotta navigate relationships and continue to elevate. But at the same time, I never just forget like where I came from. And right. The artists, the independent artists, helped me get to where I am today. So it's like I'm always gonna show love. Facts. Facts. That's I'm always gonna show love, bro. So, yeah, man, that's fire, man. And I love to see that people not forgetting, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I've been there, too. I know what it takes. Mm-hmm. And um, and you also still pass on the game, allowing relationships to happen because that's so key in this business yeah. is relationships For and sure. staying tapped in. And you don't know who's going to be the next star later on. You never know. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to be everybody. one of them judges, too. Yo, I'm pull up in Myrtle Beach. Oh, yeah, like, what's let's good? Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> everybody always try to, like, go big, but it's like, it's not what it's about, bro. Mm-hmm. It's like you can't you can't go big, bro. You can't forget where you came from. Right. And you just got to build opportunities for other people because, like you said, they could blow up t- tomorrow. Right. They're going to remember what you did to them now. Facts. Either How good or bad. They're yeah. going to remember. Yeah, they're going to remember. <laughs> I'm telling you. For real, for real. You know, you know, you know speaking about, you know, relationships and – um. People knowing how you treat them and all that. Mm-hmm. It's another segment of my show called Love, Loyalty, or Respect. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to give you a scenario and you let me know. Uh, I'm going to give you a relationship. You let me know which is most important, love, loyalty, or respect. Okay. I bet. What's the most important when it comes to your old lady, your girl, your wifey, whatever she is, your down chick? What's the most important, love, loyalty, or respect? That's a good one. <laughs> I say with my with my old lady, it's definitely loyalty because like that's just I I try to live based off like I treat people how I want to be treated. So it's like mm. if I feel like it's not reciprocated in any type of way, like whether it be my old lady or anybody, like. Mm. I just feel like loyalty is just one of them things that's important. Right, right, for sure. In life, I try to live by that. Yeah, yeah, definitely understand that. I bet. What's the most important, love, loyalty, or respect with your homie, like your ace? Your boy, y'all, y'all came from the mud together. If we came from the mud together, I would say... I want I want to say respect because it's like mm-hmm. I expect loyalty, but I always expect loyalty to a certain extent because it's like I don't want there should never be no fear or like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just the respect. Like if I respect you, you respect me. Right. And we can be homeboys forever. We locked in. Right. But it's like it's like somebody could be loyal to you, but it's like they could be loyal for the wrong intentions. Like they could be scared. They could be trying to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Secret agendas, you know. What right, I'm saying? you never know, and then it's just like, I feel like that love is just automatic. Like if we locked in, we locked in. So I, I feel like that respect is the most important. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's facts. Yeah. All right, so I don't know if you got any of these, but love, loyalty, or respect most important with your kids. I don't have any kids yet. Mm-hmm. But I'll give an answer to the question just on. Um, 
I say the love would be most important mm -hmm. because like that's what still carried throughout me today. Like my dad, like him just loving me, and even though he tired working all day, mm -hmm. he's still showing me the love, building my character. Mm. It's just like it don't matter how far, it don't matter like. I stay about probably like an hour away from my crib and, you know, mm -hmm. it's hard. With a busy schedule, it's hard to go home all the time. But right. it's just like I still feel it. Right. I still feel him pops at all times. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He leading the way. So it's just like that love is the most important with the kids. So Yo, I feel that's like, facts. That's facts. Yo, Aries is a producer, but he dropping bars in his mug. <laughs> I might feel I might feel different when I got my own kids, but I just feel like that's Yeah, that's yeah, that's real. Important. That's real. Like, I agree with you, man. Yeah, like, for sure. and you came up with some real, real points. Yeah. Um, so that's dope. All right, now, you gave us, you know, your insight on the love, loyalty, respect. I want to bring it on to some, like, some um, some recent news, too. I want to okay. transition here. For sure. Um, there, I don't know if you heard about this new thing that just happened with Jada and Will Smith. It's like, uh, yeah, you know, you know they got a post. The so Instagram what? post. It's some more to it. Uh, it's, I think it's just Instagram okay. post so far as I know right now, but you know, it was Jada birthday or whatever, you know, Will posted this, uh, you know, real nice, uh, message to her, you know what I'm saying? Like celebrating 30 some years or whatever. And he just got like a scroll of like super dates going back like 20 plus years, different yeah. ones. He posted it, you know, just saluting his wife or whatever. Sure. And, um, was like day or two later, she posted herself. With Tupac dancing to his song, yeah. to Will Smith's song, do you think she was showing love, loyalty, or disrespect by doing that? Like, how would you feel like good if your old lady, like, okay, someone's vibing to your music, but I'm dancing with a dude I used to deal with in this clip? <laughs> it, it like, get, how you take it? See, it get tricky. Like, if it was anybody else but Jada, is like we would be looking at it different. But it's like it get tricky with Jada. History, but like honestly, I feel like we don't like. I feel like we don't know the people, bro. And I feel like if she say like that's her good friend, regardless of what they had going on, like, they probably messed around. But mm -hmm. you still gonna miss your friend at the end of the day, male or female. So it's just like I try to navigate those situations. Like my old lady might have, uh, you know, what I'm saying a homeboy she grew up with that died is like mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit here and be like. Oh no, you can't cry, or you know what I'm saying? You can't, like, I don't know. And then it's like, same vice versa with me. I might have a homegirl that lost her life. It's just like, I don't know. But I do think the Instagram posted a little much, but I think what saved her is mm. they dancing to Will Smith music. So that's still kind of like a nod to like how big he was in that era with Tupac kind of coming up. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like Will Smith won it either way. Like, even though I know all the drama with the Chris Rock, but it's right, like, right. It's like if you look at it from the whole perspective, it's like he was bigger than Tupac at that instant. So it's like now that she with Will Smith, it's just like one of the things like you can't play him because he got the last laugh in a way. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, you know, yeah, yeah. I can dig that point of view because for sure. Even when Pop was alive, I think she was. I don't know. I wasn't alive, but was she with Will when um, Pop was alive? I think so. I'm not completely sure. I'm not. I think uh, I think her and um, you know Pac was was over with when um, her and Will met. Um, but something I re I recall, I think that um, Will tried to get at her like back in that day. She won't really you know give him no she play. Was she was you know rocking with Pac. Yeah. And then like later on, you know what I'm saying like Will got his position. But yeah, they got a real interesting relationship. And <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> for sure, for sure. yeah, I say it get tricky now. It, it do get, get tricky. tricky. It's like, but you made a major point right there. I can't front. I didn't think of it from that angle, um, you know, because you know someone passed away. That's your friend. You know, what I'm saying you had love for them. You know, you don't want to not allow your uh, your wife or lady to grieve. Um, but but then is there a difference between grieving and then what you're doing in the public? Also, it's like it's like do you put like I I don't know. It's hard. Like okay, like how am I going? Do you not consider how it could come across? On your, your mans that's, or your girl? That's, that's the part where I feel like I don't sit there and look at Jada and be like, she this evil woman, but I think sometimes she don't look at, like, Will will slap Chris Rock the right. taste out his mouth for you, but you don't consider how you posting this might make him look. 
Right. If that makes sense. It's not even about your intentions. It's, it's down there like, are you taken away from his name? Right. You know what I'm saying? He building your name. He ain't going to let nobody slant the biggest stage in the world. Right. You can't slander her name, but is is you giving him that same... It ain't reciprocated. Go back to loyalty. Yeah. It go back to loyalty. Yeah. It's like, she just don't see it. She don't see it at and all. I don't, and I don't understand how. It's like, like when you were saying, like, you know what I'm saying, you expect someone to be loyal because you're being loyal to them. It's like, He's he just stepping out on a limb in so many different ways for her and, and shielding her and um I believe she used him as a shield. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> boom, boom, get it. Hey, jump in front of those bullets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when they shooting, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want no parts of it. You know, it's yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. So And then her red tables be crazy. Like, Yo, it's crazy. The joint, like I don't know. I feel both sides. Like I feel I see where everybody comes from, because I be looking at that joint like it's crazy too. But like when I watch her talk, I don't think she got no like evilness in her heart. You don't think it's but malice? At the same time, you never know what females these days, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. Yeah, I think she just gonna, she gonna do what she want regardless. She don't really be she don't be putting his feelings into it. Mm-hmm. But um, he always thinking about hers. Um, and it's 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 a wild situation. But oh, still, God. you had a you had a dope perspective with it, and um, and I can understand that too. That opened my eyes a little bit. But still, yo, <laughs> yo, I got a wife at home, you heard? Like, look. Ain't none of that going on, ain't it? Ain't none of that happening. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm going to let you grief in the house. You grief in the house. I'm saying, like, yo, yo, you post a nigga. I don't care if you listen to one of my old tracks. I don't care if he was a fan. Yeah. Don't be posting no nigga. No nigga. Unless it's your uncle, your cousin, your daddy. You See, when you say it certain <laughs> ways, it make it crazier than, like... <laughs> Don't be posting on nigga. Then it make you look at it like, damn, she is posting Tupac. Like a legend in the game. Well, it's, hard, it's crazy. It's hard. It is hard. It is hard. I can't front. Like, cause his impact bigger than like his impact. He touched everybody in the world, even now. Right, right. So okay, so so that could be the major difference is because of who that person is. Um, ah, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Yeah. I don't know if I could. I don't, I couldn't be will. I ain't that mature. I don't yeah. think I'll ever be that mature, and I'm not sure if mature is the right word. Might be just a sucker. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to leave it alone. But, no, nah, no, nah, he a legend, too. Like, will is off the chain, you know, um, and I just don't know how. Man, his mental is just amazing. Yeah. It's just amazing. He's super sure. open-minded, and obviously, Aries is open-minded as well. Oh, not, it's that, like- not that open-minded, though. <laughs> We ain't doing no posts. You can, <laughs> you can read two little story reposts, but we're not, no, we not doing that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you yeah. put it like that, that's when I really see, like, nah, we're not doing that. Yeah, like, you can't see yourself doing it, but you can have understanding for that's their situation. A little bit. A little bit. Got you, got you. All right, Batman, I'm glad. You, uh, I appreciate you, uh, you know, getting your insight on that. Now, uh, you, know, you know, back to the music where, uh, you know, things you're doing, people want to be – you know, included on the challenges you're doing. Can you give the people insight on how they can uh, follow you, stay in tune, how they can get to your music, things like that? Okay. Um. So first of all, my socials are Aries in the Cut. Um. A R I E S I N T H E Cut. And then, if you want to join the challenge that we got going on, called the Bet on Me Challenge, for our Instagram and YouTube. You know, for more updates, it's on Better Than Me. I mean, bet it on me mm-hmm. on Instagram and just shoot us a DM. We'll give you more information about when we're doing the next challenge. And then if you want to find my music, um, I got a website, ariesproducer.com. I'm on all the streaming platforms and I got playlists on the streaming platforms if you want to listen to mm. who I produce for. And you can also go on my website and find that information as well. But yeah, just tap in with me. I work with all budgets. Like I said, I work with independent artists, mm-hmm. major artists. I'm ready for whatever. Yeah, straight up, man. Yo, he's dope. Y'all definitely make sure you tap in. Like, um, let's definitely make sure you lock in. I, I know I'm tuned in from this point forward. Um, mm-hmm. I love his story, everything he got going on. And uh, you got my support, brother. And hopefully oh, we can um, keep working on some, some more things in the future. For sure. Yeah, we're going to put it together. Yes, sir. So until next time, y'all hold it down. Don't let it hold you. Peace. Peace. 
What's up? This is Matt Devon, the host of the Highest Point Radio Show. Do you need exposure for your business, brand, or organization? If so, let the Highest Point Radio Show help you fulfill your need for more exposure, more business, and return on investment. Connect with me at thehighestpointbrand at gmail.com or visit my website at thehighestpointtv.com.